Okay, welcome to a new episode of Farm Like a Hero, folks. I'm Richard Perkins. Today I'm here with Joel Rodker of Norwich Farm Share. That's a CSA vegetable and herb production with 130 members, started in 2018. Norwich Farm Share is a community benefit society, and Joel and his colleague Jack are the primary growers there. Legally, it's a structure that requires a board made up of voluntary people from the community that covers things like legal, finances, communications, etc., which brings some interesting opportunities as well as constraints for the growers with regards to their decision making. It's an interesting model grown out of community discussions back in 2010 from the Transition Town movement. So I'm really excited to hear more about how this community is dealing with its food resilience and the pros and cons of this approach. So Joel, thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Hi, uh, yeah, it's a privilege to be part of the tour. Mm, welcome. And yeah, I wonder if we can just start with your beginnings. Like how did your journey with farming begin? Um, so I was brought up in South London. Um, my parents have a garden, so I was always in the garden. But uh, my mum's parents bought a small holding in Sussex in the 50s or 60s. And they had rare breed pigs. And my grandfather, who was an actor, had an organic vegetable garden, I guess, be before organic was kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and they used to enter the animals in shows all around the country, rare breed pigs and chickens. Um, so I used to go down with my mum every weekend and collect the eggs and feed the chickens and help in the veggie garden and take the pig for a walk in the forest. So, yeah, I guess a bit unusual for a Londoner that I had this exposure mm -hmm. to the kind of farm life. But uh, there's, there's a big contrast with what I'm trying to do now in the sense that they were never doing that for money. Well, my grandmother used to sell a few eggs to neighbours, but it was very much a small holding. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I loved it. It was great. And that exposure to animal, yeah, I used to spend hours sitting in the pen with the piglets and just <laughs> loved it. So that was a very positive experience for me. Um, then I went to university in Norwich and got an allotment straight away, which I've still got 25 years later or something. Oh, wow. um, so I just, yeah, I guess somewhere inside me, there was a desire to grow but I never really had the time to do the allotment properly. So I would sow stuff and I wouldn't be there to water or harvest, but I love going up there and just playing around. Um, and then, yeah, then I was at uni, I did a degree in environmental science. So that was much more academic, but yeah, my interest was in environmental politics and um, how that impacted on the ground but I, I suppose I wasn't really doing anything apart from the allotment growing wise then I worked in a vegetarian restaurant that was run as a cooperative for three years then I cycled around Europe for two years and I joined lots of WUF um, organizations so I did mm. woofing in Romania and Poland and Italy Spain and Portugal um, and that was really interesting and the cycling and meeting people was amazing but I never really worked on a farm where they were not like the farms that I'm I'm kind of in contact with now people were doing tourism or it was like a, a sort of hobby um so I never really had the experience of 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 people running a really profitable ecological small-scale farm which is interesting um yeah I don't know what what the reason was maybe I just didn't find the right farm but I wasn't really looking for that specifically I was just looking for nice places to go but but I loved it I yeah I worked on sheep farms and organic um veg gardens etc um then I came back to England and I was a teacher for nine years teaching geography but I set up a school garden with a pond and tried to get kids involved <laughs> in uh, growing food, which had a, a lot of challenges. But, you know, there were some kids that loved it. And it was interesting for me because so many of them didn't have the body strength or the, or the knowledge. You know, they could hardly put a spade in the ground or they, they didn't know what crops were. And I showed them what they could eat and they loved it. And so for me, it's always been important kind of sharing that knowledge and enthusiasm. But again, it wasn't you know, it's so hard to run a garden in a school when you're trying to teach GCSEs and A-levels and there just isn't the time. And then the summer, there's nobody there. So um, then my grandmother died and I was left a bit of money and I started thinking, you know, maybe I can just put the teaching on hold for a bit and try and do something that 
to do with growing. I wasn't really sure what. Um, my grandparents had bought a house in France in the 50s or 60s and, and it was a ruin and they sort of redid it and it had about three acres of land, a beautiful part of the Dordogne in southwest France. So we used to go out there every summer. That was my holiday for most of my childhood. And I used to spend our, well, we all spent the holiday basically weeding and strimming and kind of getting the garden looking nice. And then that would be the end of the holiday and we'd come back. <laughs> so not everybody's idea of a holiday, but I guess, again, it, it was a part of the, the farming and the, the being outside. Um, so then I left my teaching job and went to live in the cottage in France for a year to see if I could get into growing there. I was really interested in walnuts because it's a big walnut growing area. Mm. I was trying to find out about that and maybe keeping goats. Um, so I spent about a year there and grew a lot of veg, but realized that unless I committed to it full time and had, I think it was at the minimum would have been about 20 hectares of walnuts to make it work. And obviously the time to, to get to a profitable place, um, you know, I wasn't there for long enough. And then my mum got ill, so I had to come back to England she died in 2016. Since then, I've been kind of looking after my dad, who's pretty elderly. Um, and then I got a, there was an opportunity to, to go to somewhere near Peterborough. Uh, some farmers had some land. They were opening a farm shop. They wanted someone to set up a, a market garden. So I went there in 2018 and started setting that up. And that, you know, I learned a lot, but I was sleeping in a tent on their farm until December. And then I moved into a caravan with no heating and no water. So it was pretty tough. Um, and then it was just difficult with the sales and the traveling back and forth. And uh, eventually it just, it didn't work out. So I came back to Norwich and, um, you know, and, and I guess in those three or four years since I left teaching, I discovered Jean-Martin Fortier and Curtis Stone and then you and Elliot Coleman. And, that sort of it made me feel like it was possible to make a living from farming because having that experience of my grandparents in Sussex I kind of and and being in France it just seemed very hard to make a living growing vegetables but these models seemed to show that it was possible so I guess I had that in the back of my mind and I was starting to experiment with those techniques um came back to Norwich Jack who I work with now was a sort of um a friend but I didn't know him very well and he said that Norwich Farm he'd been working for Norwich Farm Share for about a year but in December 2018 they'd got an email from the person doing the finances saying they didn't have any money left they're basically bankrupt um the other oh, grower basically left she was just really pissed off and um said that this is a joke and left so Jack was on his own doing a day a week over the winter. We got talking at the beginning of 2019 and just had a discussion about whether we could kind of ramp up production, get lots more members and, and have enough money to pay ourselves to do two days a week each. And um, that's what we did, basically. Um, and yeah, I've been there ever since. So that was the beginning of sort of February, March 2019. Mm. Oh, what a great story. And you, so you've always had this in your blood from, and you, you even eking out of you when you're meant to be teaching geography. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's always been there. But I guess what I've learned over the last couple of years is that if, if you can't, well, you can obviously do it in your back garden, but if you can't make a living from it, then it's not, it's not viable. And, it, and it's, yeah, for me, learning all of that business stuff and the marketing, that's been a big eye opener, but I love it. Um, and it didn't come naturally to me, but that's a sort of new side of it, which I've been learning about 